So, senior partners in the room, of which there are no doubt many, uh, are you listening? Because allowing the young men in your practice to fraternise will simply cut deep into your profit margins. And what I suggest is having all your employees sign a blanket love contract. They're very in vogue in the United States. Uh, what they do is they... Um, disclaim liability for office romance, and for good measure, there's usually a clause about the Christmas party. <laughs> Obviously, don't sign one yourself. Heavens, no, that would really cut into your extracurricular activities. Um, so really, in the face of such devastating sexual prowess on the other side here, there is nothing left to do, ladies and gentlemen, but pray. So join me for a moment here. Lord, give us today freedom from babyish clients in low-cut halter necks. Forgive us our thoughts about the new article clerks as we forgive them for wearing those pants on purpose. <laughs> Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from inconvenient, awkward meetings with the Legal Practice Liability Committee. <laughs> Amen. And now, the first speaker for the affirmative, Dr. Tim Cannon. Dr. Timothy Cannon, Chief Fellow of Haematology and Oncology at New York University, has been published four times on topics including inflammatory breast cancer, hairy cell leukemia, and ovarian cancer. Actually, in a testament to the dangers of Google-based biography research, some 14,797 kilometres away, an upstanding citizen of Fredericksburg, Virginia, has no idea his CV is being used for jokes at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. <laughs> So instead, please welcome first-year Mentor Ellison lawyer and winner of the 2012 LIV Golden Gavel competition, Tim, he's definitely not a medical doctor, Cannon, to tell you why intra-office romances are great for your career and your love life. Tim! Thank you. Please, no medical uh, disasters tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, take it from me, office romance is great! Now, it may be the Italian Catholic in me, but I need to start with a confession. Due to certain circumstances, I have a little bit riding on the outcome tonight. What circumstances? Well, allow me to introduce... Circumstances! <laughs> Hi, darling. <laughs> Sorry about the spotlight. <clears throat> Circumstances does have a name, but in order to protect her identity from any Minter's personnel that might be snooping around, let's just call her... Stella Gurphy. <coughs> Miss Gurphy and I are colleagues, and we are ensconced in a heady workplace romance, and it's going very well, isn't it, Schnookums? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, you're gorgeous. No, you're gorgeous. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> it is going well, and it all comes down to one thing, shared workplace infrastructure. For example, back before Stella and I received our ACCC clearance for our proposed merger, we scheduled a pre-merger workshop and we scheduled it using the firm's Microsoft Outlook calendar service. Now this service basically allows you to see when the person you are scheduling is available to meet. <coughs> what a lot of people don't know is that when you work at the same workplace, you can slip Eugene from IT a cheeky 50 bucks and he can give you access to all of the information in the calendar of the person that you're stalking. D dating. <coughs> dating. You know, like, hypothetically, you could see that Stella has a meeting with Mick Liao on Tuesday at 8pm at Vue de Monde. And uh, you might notice that Stella and Mick seem to be meeting quite a bit lately. And so you might draft some anonymous threatening correspondence to Mick, warning him to stay the hell away from my girlfriend! Now, lots of people counselled Stella and I to keep our romance under wraps, so for a bit of guidance, I did what any red, hot-blooded Casanova would do, and I consulted WikiHow, and its hugely popular article, 25 Hits and Counting, How to Have a Secret Office Romance. Rule number one, communicate in stealth. Very important, which is why Stella and I now communicate at work only using, you guessed it, carrier pigeon. <clears throat> Rule number two, no public displays of affection. We've been pretty good on that front, don't you think? There was that at one time. In the corridor? Level 17? That's one high five I will not forget. 
Rule number three, don't leave any evidence. And I quote, evidence can be anything from undeleted emails to misplaced underwear. Let's be honest, not leaving your underwear lying about isn't just good relationship advice, that's good life advice. <laughs> Which is why I now keep my underwear safely secured on a lanyard at all times. <laughs> Look, I think the point is clear enough. You take advantage of workplace infrastructure, you, you can keep track of your undies, your workplace romance is going to be fine. <clears throat> and don't worry about your career. I mean, lawyers are expected at all times to be either working at their desks or cowering under them. But when the object of your affection is at work with you, you'll never want to leave. Employers love this stuff. And looking further ahead, no pressure here, Stella, but just think of the corporate spawn. We could be minting Minter's babies. <clears throat> if that's not the fast track to partnership, I don't know what is. While I'm at it, workplace couples should get other perks too. In fact, if there are any Minter's partners here tonight, uh, <clears throat> Just a suggestion, last Valentine's Day, Stella and I treated ourselves to a romantic dinner by the light of the Minter Ellison After Hours staff dinner fridge. And while the cuisine was just edible, uh, <coughs> some candelabras, maybe just some cutlery, uh, would really enhance the experience. <coughs> now you're probably all sitting there thinking, look buddy, you're off living the workplace romance dream, but what about us? Well, to start with, I'm led to believe that there might be a few lawyers in the house. Is that right? Any, any lawyers here? Are there any lawyers here? Okay, lawyers, if I could just get you to raise your hands, please. Raise your hands. Come on. You can do it. Raise your hands. Good on you. <coughs> look around. Okay, look at the other lawyers. Huh? Huh? Bit of all right, eh? <laughs> Smart. Sassy. Literate. <coughs> <laughs> and now look at the rest of them. Discreetly. <clears throat> Seriously, I mean, to these people, how much do they earn? You know? <laughs> what were their enter scores? <laughs> Why are they at a legal comedy debate on a Monday night? <laughs> <laughs> and now to the non-lawyers. Sorry about the literacy jar, I'm <laughs> just joking. <laughs> um, but seriously, you saw the lawyers. <clears throat> mm -mm. Just don't. I mean, I think you owe it to yourselves and to society to keep that parasitic legal bloom quarantined. Let's face facts, folks. We're all just better keeping to our own, and there's no better way than to keep the loving inside the firm. Thank you. I'm expecting the uh, second speaker for the negative to sector go cracking space. With pleasure, I introduce Anat Bogarty from Garland Hawthorne Bray Lawyers. Anat, also com commonly referred to as Anat, Natalie, Anna, or if all else fails, Shazza, is excited to be the second speaker for the negative team, but not so excited as the compeller to share this excitement with a co-worker. Throughout her illustrious career, spanning a colossal 1.5 years, Anat has enjoyed advising clients in relation to a range of planning and land acquisition issues, which really has the ultimate result of extinguishing any possible ounce of flirtation in the office. Anat, you should try telling people you're a tax lawyer. <laughs> Anat heads the Love by Law, Not by Boss division of the firm, and assists fallen colleagues who have been subject of a failed, or is it nailed, and now entirely awkward intra-office relationships. And that. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight I will explain, nay convince, each and every one of you that intra-office relationships are, without any shadow of a doubt, a liability on your career, and your sanity. For the esteemed lawyers in this great audience, you will no doubt recall Lord Denning's seminal judgment in Errington Crane and Scottish Co-worker Society. His brilliant words resonate with me to this day. Don't engage where you get your wage. <laughs> don't hit that goal where you get your payroll. And my personal favourite, uh, don't get your honey where you get your money. Now, you may be questioning where exactly those profound words were uttered, but it is there, I promise, I promise. 
Ladies and gentlemen, things don't always end in fairy tale land with the white dress, the dashing groom, and of course the ironclad prenuptial agreement. Your various love life misfortunes do not need to be spread across the office for everyone to talk about. That's what Facebook and Saturday night is for, okay? Now, you may call me a pessimist, or a feminist for that matter, but I call me a legitimist for four key reasons. One, convenience. Us lawyers, we strive for efficiency and hammering out those billable hours, so to speak. And what better way than having to actually go out and find someone when you can simply look across the cubicle and find cute trainee Tristan, or even the opposition's Mr. Tim Cannon, winking right back at you. I'll call you later. <laughs> but really, people, the word is not convenience. <laughs> the word is laziness. Wikipedia, as trustee for the Encyclopedia Britannica, may it rest in peace, describes laziness as the disinclination to exert despite having the ability to do so, which, in practical terms, is better known as beer goggles, or for us ladies, a martini dreamy. But in the case of the workplace, the been working too many hours and you'll just have to do to overcome my boredom of making discovery glasses. When you take off said glasses, you'll notice the trainee Tristan is in fact, what was I thinking Tristan? The Melbourne high attending, polo Ralph Lauren collar popping, country road bear carrying, fake glasses wearing, amazingly and slightly concerning hairless strutting, and as Taylor Swift put so aptly, has an indie record much cooler than mine. People rise above the intra-office laziness because otherwise a case of he'll do will turn into a bad, bad case of how the hell am I going to avoid you for the next X many years? Which brings me to my next point, the proverbial morning after. Or in the case of you and trainee Tristan, the morning after and after and after and after and after, with two days break and back to square one. But let's just say you decided to go for trainee Tristan with his smooth and indie yet oh so brilliant ways and you start thinking yes. This guy is amazing. OMG, you guys, we met at work, and he's like wonderful. He's like incredible. He's like prima facie, the real deal. It's like so in good faith. It's like beyond reasonable doubt, because in the balance of probabilities, he's just so bona fide. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right? So you tell everyone who'll listen, and then the whole office knows. But it's OK, because you guys are like test legitimate, and we'll last the test of time. And you'll read the LIV journal together over a Sunday morning double shot latte, and have layer babies together, right? <sighs> Wrong. <laughs> and then you break up. You hate his guts with his stupid hair and his obnoxious vocabulary. And then you start watching everything he does. And everything he does annoys you. Oh my god, Claire, did you see how he ate that apple? He's so gross. Oh my god, Claire, he like went into the kitchen and I was there. It's like he's stalking me. <laughs> oh my god, Claire, he like asked me if I knew what the password was for LexisNexis. It's like, hello, loser, I'm not your trainee slave. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking, poor Claire. But then comes the hard part of making sure everyone thinks you're fine. All of a sudden, you think you've become the world's greatest actor, the world's greatest ventriloquist. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm acting totally normal. This is what I always act like. Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Tristan, no, you're a great friend, it's fine, everything's fine. And then there's the overly friendly. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. I'm fine. You see, I'm fine. I always act like I have hyperglycemia. <laughs> Which brings me to point number three, the office. Now that the office knows that your joint venture ceased profitable operation and was even shorter than Kim Kardashian's marriage, the gossip will be rife. And then the imagination takes over. That, that couch, that, that couch in the breakout area, has, has it been cleaned recently? That, that photocopier, who, who used it last? What is that smudge? Somebody get me my antiseptic wipes now! <sighs> and finally, and some might argue the most ill-advised state of play that you could ever fall into, the, oh yeah, I got this, the most efficient way to get promoted, uh, just between you and me, I'll sleep my way to the top. Now, nobody wants to be that person. Let's put aside the reputation battering for a moment. I can list 10 people right now who will start taking advantage of your eagerness and willingness to do whatever it takes. That promotion will come at a cost of yes pleases, no sirs, and of course I can drop off that brief at your house at 1.30 a.m. and take the back entrance. <coughs> streets. streets. <laughs> and then uh, the whole concept of performance reviews, it just, it just really starts to take a whole new meaning.